Use of strong language in party offices. A call to elect clean candidates. SJB's decision questioned. A storm blows in the north too. A very bad miss. The leader, they share the magazine, pro tipelagasma. Use of strong language in party offices. All the political party offices remain tense these days. Many attempt to be the representatives of the people to build the country. By the 8th, 17 parties and 16 independent groups had handed in nominations to contest the upcoming general election. Nominations close on Friday. In some political offices, exchanges of blows are avoided with difficulty. The use of strong language is a common occurrence. A call to elect clean candidates. A campaign is on against candidates accused of wrongdoing, bribery and environmental pollution. Parties are being told not to give nominations to such persons and voters advised not to vote and elect them to Parliament. March 12th movement is conducting the campaign. Certain critics don't take such to their liking. Kusal Pereira shoots it down. One of them, Kusal Pereira, says medications for filaria should not be requested to control dengue. He questions anyone's right to decide if someone is bad and to be abhorred and rejected by society, and demands to know the parameters for deciding so. The call to give nominations to so-called clean persons is the most foolish request made in recent times, says Pereira. All the parties are corrupt more or less and don't have any democracy in them. They are racists and religious fanatics. Bringing clean persons to politics will make them corrupt too, according to him. SJB's decision questioned. Anyway, the SJB has decided not to give nominations to anyone hated and rejected by the people. Iran heads a committee to report on that to the party's nominations board. Sajith's decision applies especially to the party men who had accepted bar permits and other perks from Ranil when he was the president. Is it possible to find proof against anyone within the short period available? Some ask. Gas cylinder finds it irrelevant. Being disliked by the public is a matter irrelevant to those in the gas cylinder because a majority in it were in the Rajapaksa government. In addition to them, the UNP plans to introduce some new faces from every district. In the meantime, the NPP has finished preparing its nomination lists. It claims having no one with an accusation of wrongdoing. Vote machines too are alarmed. Many in Ranil's government are not contesting this time. SB is one of them. He has been in every parliament since 1994. During the CBK regime, he was called the vote machine. Reports say Akila and Ruan in Elephant, as well as Duminda and Alagiawani in Chair, are worried by the decision to contest under gas cylinder. Even its national list has become problematic. Duminda, Mahindananda at loggerheads. Just yesterday, Duminda and Alagiawane demanded the national list shouldn't have any minister in the previous government. It came after they heard that Dinesh and Tehran plan to get appointed to parliament. With Trophy naming them, the nomination board is unable to do anything about it. Just days ago, Mahindananda spoke against Duminda over the matter and told him off. The duo are of the view that they could easily have contested under chair, if not for trophy. Even CBK's support would have been possible, they say. Pfizer Mustafa is the chair nominee to the national list. SJB too finds things too hot to handle. The SJB too finds trouble in its national list. Iran is out and GL and Patali are in. So Iran will have to contest from Maratawa. The plan is to isolate him by appointing popular figures to adjoining electorates. It's the same remedy the leadership gave to Hirunika earlier. Hirunika and Harsha signed nomination papers to contest from Colombo, but Iran hadn't done it by 8th afternoon. Telephone entangled in tree. Furthermore, the SJB is having trouble allocating quotas for its affiliates. The worst-case scenario is with regard to the SLMC, with four rounds of talks so far failing to reach common ground. When a senior said the presidential election was lost, even with the SLMC supporting, Hakim reacted that the SJB may have lost, but the SLMC secured victory everywhere it gave its backing. Sparks under ashes in Kandy Matara 
The nomination list matter in Kandy is not yet over. Atanayake and Senasinghe are fighting for the district leadership. Earl set everything else aside and was in Colombo to meet Sajith to register his protest over the inclusion of outsiders. Matara, too, remains problematic. The SJB has two new figures in Chatura Galapati and Rehan Jayawikrama for a single available seat. The former missed it by a very small margin last time. Both campaign in the entire district, so a senior is scared of losing his position. Arjuna, Vas, Dilshan disappear from the scene. Arjuna, who supported Sajith in his bid for the presidency, is yet to decide whether or not to contest. Many say Sajith cannot contact him over the phone at least. Two other ex-cricketers, Vas and Dilshan, remain unresponsive. They were expected to contest from Gampaha and Kalutara, respectively. Ranjan, too, is to say goodbye. Ranjan is hoping against hope that he will be given a full pardon, since that allows him to contest. He says he is considering invitations from several parties. He awaits word from the election commission to go ahead. Going by what he says now, it seems he has no hopes in the SJB anymore. Star accepts the son, Irida Deshaya, says in a piece of gossip that the son of a former big one is without a party to contest from. The father has lost even his party and remains at home. His intention was to get nominations from the Star Party for his son from his remote district. This is in reference to none other than Sirisena's son, Daham. Now, Delith has solved the matter for him. Daham has been given Polonarua. Roshan got a transfer from there to Kalutara. His Savajana Balaya appointed Upali Jayasekara as Colombo district leader and A.R. Dinendra as district organiser. For Ratnapura, the district leader is Prabath de Alwis. Dilith gets rid of Tabla and accepts medal. Dilith contested for the presidency under the CPSL's star symbol. This time, his party is contesting under medal, although the previous choice was Tabla. Dilith told some journalists that while the NPP will get the gold medal or the premiership, he will get the silver medal or the opposition leader position. It seems he will now contest from Gampaha. Vasu left him and joined the NPP. Gaman Pilar, too, contests Colombo under medal, while CPSL's senior vice president, Wira Sumana, contests from Matara. Wira Wansa is a lone man today. Wira Wansa posted an interesting video on his Facebook page. It showed what he did when he was in the JVP that included protests, picketing, sit-down protests, etc. These days, he is a lone man, he is unlikely to contest. So will the others in his party too. In the meantime, the LSSP plans to contest under Mohan Pereira's Democratic National Alliance with post-box symbol. So, some lament the fate that has befallen the oldest leftist party in the country. A storm blows in the North too. Parties in the North too find things in a big mess. Some media reported that Sena Thiraja has resigned as the ITAC leader. The reason is said to be the party's decision not to give him nominations. The ITAC supported Sajith at the recent polls. Senathiraja has invited Shritharan to take over since he was elected to the position at the party's 17th National Convention in January this year. In a letter to him, Senathiraja noted he was yet to take up the responsibility, adding that he resigned from the position effective from 7th October. Northern Tamil parties formed ITAC in 2006 under the home symbol. Sivajilingam, Siddharthan, Gajendran have since left it and contested the 2020 election separately. The party leadership remains an issue since the death of Sampanthan. It is now a matter before courts. It is said that Sivanyanam, Sritharan and even Sumanthiran are going to contest from ITAC. A very bad miss. A big-time businessman in the rice trade always did things to his advantage by siding with either of the main parties. Last time, he supported the telephone party and funded it generously. His intention was to get appointed to Diawana. He was so close to the party hierarchy that he was part of the delegation that handed over nominations for the presidency. Following the defeat, he has vowed not to fund politics again. That's it for today.
The leader, they share the mug again, proud to be a guest.